It was one thing to see the Prophet وسلم, hungry and in poverty. It was another thing to see him human and in pain. If you live in that society, he is your Superman وسلم. It's uncomfortable to see the Prophet وسلم, in grief. And there's a difference between the crying that the Prophet وسلم, has in his salah, in his prayer and in his remembrance and the crying that he has with tragedy sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it strikes his own home many times when we talk about the death of the prophet sallallahu children we just mentioned that he buried 6 out of 7 sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we tend to group them all in together and of course every single death of every child of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stung him but Ibrahim was a very, very different death because the circumstances of his life were so different. This is when the Prophet وسلم, was about to die himself والسلام, and he's over 20 years after the last child before his birth. So Fatima anha, is the last child before Ibrahim and the rest of them have all passed away. The Prophet وسلم, has lost all five of them. His two other sons died when they were little and his three other daughters lived to be adults and get married and the Prophet وسلم, buried them all. And Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha is of course a married woman now and she has her own children and her children are like children to the Prophet وسلم. And then Allah blesses the Prophet وسلم, with his first son in Islam. And it seems to come at a time when the Prophet وسلم, is about to depart from this world and so there is so much that is tied to this child. Think about the joy of the Prophet وسلم, for the first time having a son with all of the rituals of Islam. And it's at this point in his life وسلم, and he's able to take his son, his only son in Islam and perform the adhan in his ears and to do the tahniq of his own son وسلم, after he's done that for so many other children and to perform the aqiqah for his own son وسلم, after he's done that for so many other people's sons. And the Prophet وسلم, would take Ibrahim, his son, with such pride and he would say to the people, لَقَدْ رَزَقَ اللَّهُ نَبِيَّكُمْ وَلَدَا وَسَمَّيْتُهُ عَلَىٰ أَبِي Ibrahim. Look, O people, Allah has blessed your Prophet with a son and I named him after my father Ibrahim. Think about that, subhanAllah. Think about being in the masjid when the Prophet وسلم, is holding Ibrahim for the first time, attending the aqiqah, uh, the Prophet وسلم, bringing him around and the Prophet وسلم, clearly had an attachment to this child. So he used to visit him daily when he was with his wet nurse. He used to take him with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he would visit the homes of his spouses. He would bring him to the masjid Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He used to always go out to see him when he was with his wet nurse. So it was known that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had an excitement to go and see his own son Ibrahim now. After all of these years, his own son Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that seems to be the one son that's going to survive him after his death. And then Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu speaks about what happened. Ibrahim was about 16 months old. So he's not a little baby in the sense that at 16 months old, the baby has a personality. You have that connection to that baby. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu describes the scene when the messenger comes to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the house of his wet nurse. It says, Ya Rasulullah, Ibrahim is really sick and it looks like he's about to die. And the Prophet وسلم, drops what he's doing and he goes with his companions to the home of the wet nurse. And the husband of the wet nurse was a man by the name of Abu Saif and he was a blacksmith. So the Prophet وسلم, goes to him and he asks for permission to enter and he takes Ibrahim. And the Prophet وسلم, who has held this baby and showed him to all of us like a proud father would and who loves this baby so much and now is seeing him dying, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قَبَّلَهُ وَشَمَّهُ Anas ta'ala says that he held him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he kissed him and he started to smell his hair. And as he's holding him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba are just looking on at him. You're looking at him holding his son and this is the most human and vulnerable moment that you're going to see your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibrahim starts to breathe harder and slower. 
And Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, in the arms of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his soul left his body. In the arms of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How difficult is it for a father to hold their own child and their child breathe their last in their arms and your Prophet has a heart full of love and mercy. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi starts to weep. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he looks at the Prophet sallallahu and he says, Wa anta ya Rasulullah, you too, O Messenger of Allah. And he wasn't saying that with cruelty. It's not like the man who, who said that to the Prophet sallallahu when he was kissing Al Hassan wal Hussein and he was saying it from a point of arrogance. It's from a place of, of admiration and Ya Rasulullah, you cry too? We're not used to seeing you this way. We're not used to seeing the Prophet sallallahu break down. We're not used to seeing the Prophet sallallahu weep in such a fashion over his child. We see this from other people. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as he's holding his son who has now passed away in his hands and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa looks at him and he says, Ya ibn Awf, O oh, son of Awf, it's rahmah, it's mercy that Allah puts in the heart. Allah put this mercy in my heart. I can't help myself, right? I love this child. And Anas radiallahu anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa started to weep more. And we were staring at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And of course they were crying with him. How would you not if you're sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa holding his dead son at that point? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Inna al-ayna tadma' wal-qalba yahsan wa la naqoolu illa ma yurdi Allah wa inna bi firaqika ya Ibrahim na mahzunun na mahzunun The eyes are shedding tears. The heart feels sadness. And we don't say except that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are sad, O Ibrahim, over your departure. We are sad, O Ibrahim, over your departure. We are sad, O Ibrahim, over your departure. We're grieving over your loss, O Ibrahim. And the Prophet ﷺ, who got to enjoy this one son in Islam, this one child in Islam, in fact, that he got to do the rituals of Islam with, now he has to do the rituals of Islam with this child in terms of his janazah. He has to wash him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has to shroud him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He places him in the grave himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he leads his janazah. Now, if you live in Medina at the time, because you've probably heard this hadith about the eclipse a few times. The eclipse happens, a solar eclipse happens on the same day the Prophet sallallahu son dies. Ibrahim died that day and they looked up and the sun eclipsed the moon. How would you not think that there's some connection between the two? And you have seen the grief of the Prophet Sallallahu in a way that you've never seen before. It's a unique type of grief that the Prophet Sallallahu is facing. So of course the Sahaba, they started to say that the sun eclipsed for the death of Ibrahim. And that's why we're seeing this, this phenomenon happen. Of course, it happens on the same day. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes out and he leads the prayer of Khusuf. He leads the eclipse prayer Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's so long that you would faint behind him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the length of his Salah during that eclipse. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, you can imagine his du'as and where his heart is in those moments. But even then, he's still our teacher Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He teaches us how to grieve alayhi salatu wasalam, to cry like a human being, to have that softness of the heart, but at the same time to make sure that you don't say anything that's displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam stands up and he says, the sun and the moon are two ayat, they're two signs of the signs of Allah. They don't eclipse for the death of anyone, nor do they eclipse for the birth of anyone. So when you see these eclipses, then make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray and give sadaqah. SubhanAllah, even then, the Prophet ﷺ was teaching with his actions and with his words. And if you feel pain, know that your Prophet felt pain Wasallam. And if you cry, know that your Prophet cried as well. But also know that your Prophet set the example Wasallam of patience. And even in the hardest moment of his life, the only thing that was coming out of here was Alhamdulillah, and that's what was in his heart as well. Sallu alayhi Sallu alayhi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam